Today I'm going to show you three headphones you can use in the pool or in open water, so if you want to spice up your swims with some of your favorite tunes, then this video was made for you. Hi everyone, my name is Andy and you're watching Andy's Tech Tone. One of my first videos that made a big splash back in 2020 was about the best swimming headphones available at the time. But it was three years ago and while that video is still popular and seemingly not that much have changed in the niche of swimming headphones, I thought it was about time I had a look around on the market and gave you three more up-to-date options you can use for your swims. So the three headphones I put under the microscope today have three key features in common. One, they are fully waterproof. Two, they come with an onboard storage for offline use. And three, they all use bone conduction technology. In a bit more detail, first there is the Creative Outlier 3 Pro, which can offer an IPX8 fully waterproof rating, 8 gigs of storage, Bluetooth 5.3 with support for the SBC and the AAC audio codecs, multipoint use and up to 10 hours of playtime. And all that will cost you only $90. Next is the Mojave Run Plus for around $140. And for our money we get an improved IP68 rating, 4 times the storage, Bluetooth 5.2, SBC and AAC, app support and up to 8 hours of battery life along with a quick charge feature. And then we have the Nyanka Runner Diver Mark II with a hefty $170 price tag, an IPX8 rating, 32 gigs of storage, Bluetooth 5.3, SBC, AAC, multipoint support and up to 10 hours of battery life. But these are just numbers on a spec sheet, so let's see how the headphones perform in real life, starting with their fit and comfort. Well, first of all, you may have noticed that the Nyanka and the Creative headphones are very similar to each other in their design. And upon closer inspection, you will find that with the exception of the speaker units that sit on the bone in front of your ears, the two headphones are indeed completely identical. The ear hooks, the main units behind your ears, the little status LED and the neckband are all the same. Even the four charging pins, the charging cable itself and that weird little plug which is there to protect the microphone from water damage when swimming. I asked both manufacturers as to why the similarities, but I did not get a straight answer from either of them, and I don't want to speculate as to what's the story behind all this, so we will leave it at that. All similarities aside, you will see how different these two can sound, but more about that in a bit. Back to the design, the Mojave Run Plus greatly differs from the other two, even if the basics are the same. We got the bone conduction speakers in front of our ears, attached to the ear hooks, then we got the batteries and some electronics crammed into the head unit behind the ears, which are connected by the neckband. And out of the three, I found the Mojave headphones to be the most tight fitting on my head, and these are the most compact and most lightweight too. We talk about tiny differences here, and at the end of the day, I did not notice any major comfort or fitting issues with any of the headphones. They are all comfortable during casual use, when strolling around in town, when cycling with a helmet and sunglasses on, or when running with a baseball cap on. And I also found them equally secure when swimming with a swim cap. That said, I would only use the Mojave without a swim cap, while the other two feel the tiniest bit more loose, which is enough for me to not feel quite as confident about using them with no swim cap on. But swim cap or not, all three headphones were comfortable in the water and I personally did not experience issues such as chafing for example. If you see any footage here with chafe marks on my neck, that's all from my new wetsuit and not from the headbands themselves. Another difference, even if all three headphones are fully waterproof, is that while the Mojave Run Plus comes with an IP68 rating, both the Nyanka and the Creative are rated as IPX8. The number 6 in this case means that the Mojave headphones are not only fully watertight, but they are also completely protected against solids such as dust or sand. And this fact might come into play when using the headphones for swimming in open water or when using them outside in general. Speaking of open water, make sure you rinse your headphones under fresh water after each and every time you use them in the sea as prolonged exposure to salt water might cause issues down the road and no IP rating can really save your headphones from degradation in the long run without some extra care. 
Of course, the same applies to chlorinated water in the pool as well. Another difference between the OnePlus and the other two is that we only get a carry pouch from Mojave, which can protect the headphones when carrying it around in a bag. Onto the battery performance of the headphones, it can greatly vary depending on how you use them, and there are way too many different use cases to cover, so I'm going to just rely on the manufacturer's data here, which tells us that the Mojave Run Plus can last up to 8 hours, while the other two can push their single charge playtime up to about 10 hours. The Mojave is the only one that supports fast charging, which means an extra 1.5 hours of use after only 5 minutes of charging, and since I have no information about the other two having a similar feature, in my eyes, it brings the Run Plus back to level with the other two in terms of overall battery performance. All three headphones use a proprietary magnetic charger, but as I mentioned it before, Noenka and Creative use the same 4-pin connector on their headphones, and we also get the same charging cable with each, while Mojave have their own 4-pin magnetic charger. And I prefer using the Mojave charger as the magnets are much stronger and it makes knocking off the cable by accident much harder than on the other two. And talking about these cables takes us to offline use and the MP3 mode. How? Well, the explanation is easy. It's a swimming headphones comparison and offline use is the only way to listen to music in the pool or in the sea, because Bluetooth will not work underwater. So you will need audio files stored on board of the headphones to be used offline, and the proprietary USB cable you get in each box is the only way to transfer your MP3s or WAV files from your computer to the built-in storage. And copying the files can take a lot of time. And I mean, go get your breakfast and pack your swim gear, and by the time you've finished, you might still need to wait before the file transfer is completed kind of time. For example, copying 30 MP3s, which are 389 megabytes of size in total, took a mind-boggling 9 minutes and 41 seconds for the Outlier 3 Pro, and even 10 seconds slower than that for the Nyanka. Not exactly up to today's standards now, is it? The Mojave can manage to complete the same task in 1 minute and 12 seconds, which is still considered extremely slow in the age of Thunderbolt and USB 4, but at least it's something you can do even last minute before heading to the pool. I'm not sure how long it would take to fill up the whole 30 plus gigs with MP3s, but for an hour or two of swimming, a couple of albums should be sufficient, so that's doable, even if these slow transfer speeds are more than frustrating. And what about wireless file transfers, for example? But as long as you have some compatible files on the headphones, you can listen to your tunes offline. Speaking of compatibility, here's a list of the supported file formats on each of the headphones. All three are kind of toe-to-toe, -to -toe, as you can see. One thing I noticed was that while M4A is not listed in the official specs of the Outlier 3 Pro, it plays those files just as well as the other two. And as far as offline playback, the Creative can only do normal mode, which means that it will play all songs in alphabetical or alphanumerical order, depending on your file names. The Runner Diver Mark II can do normal and shuffle mode as well, which means random playback. The Mojave Run Plus adds a single loop mode to normal and shuffle, which will keep playing the same track over and over, until you skip to the next one using the controls. All three headphones can handle folders, but you cannot select which folder to play and in what order. So it's all pretty basic as far as functionality is concerned, and I found it best to have a playlist with all the songs I want to listen to in the pool, and just copy over the files, and hit play at the beginning of my swim, then only hit pause at the end of my workout without messing with anything else in between. Where you source your mp3s and flag files from is a completely different story, and I won't get into that now as it's beyond the scope of this video. Onto the wireless connection, we got two headphones out of the three that support multipoint use. It means that both the Nyanka and the Creative can connect to two devices at the same time. Both can switch sources automatically, the switch happens in a second or two in both instances, and both solutions are platform agnostic, so basically the two headphones can deliver the same performance here. The Mojave, on the other hand, does not support multipoint use at all. But all three headphones support the AAC and the SBC audio codecs. The Runner Diver 2 tends to drop the Bluetooth connection here and there, but I found the other two to be solid, with a stable connection across all scenarios. 
lip sync is okay on all three, and while the creative offers you a low latency mode, activating it will only bring the delay down to the level of the other two, so there is no real advantage. And since we talk about a latency of around 200 milliseconds or higher on all three, hardcore gamers will probably not find any of these headphones responsive enough in my opinion. One interesting fact is that all three headphones maintain the Bluetooth connection in offline mode, as long as your source device is within range, and the headphones are above water, so the wireless signal does not get blocked. Now let me give you some audio samples from the built-in microphones on each of these headphones, starting with the Creative Outlier 3 Pro. So this is the audio quality you can expect from these headphones in a quiet environment. Next up is the Nanka Runner Diver Mark. Too. Now I'm still sitting in the same quiet room, so this is the phone call quality you can expect from these headphones in such conditions. And last but not least, this is an audio sample from the built-in microphone on the Mojave Run Plus bone conduction headphones in a quiet room. I'm staying with the Mojave Run Plus headphones for a second. Let's hear what the microphone can do in more adverse conditions on a slightly windy day on the side of a slightly windy road. And switching to the Nine Car Runner Diver Mark II, this is the audio quality you can expect when you happen to make a phone call outside with some wind and traffic noise thrown into the mix. And for our last microphone test today, this is the audio quality you can expect from the Creative Outlier 3 Pro Bone Conduction headphones when you make a phone call while you are out in the box. Next up are the controls. The Nyanka and the Creative offers the exact same button layout and functionality as there are three buttons on the main unit on the right hand side on both. The middle button is the on off switch, but it controls play and pause and it can also be used to switch between MP3 and Bluetooth modes. The other two buttons control volume and tracks. As an extra on the Outlier 3 Pro, four clicks on the mode button will activate the low latency mode when the wireless connection is active, while the same four click action will switch between normal and shuffle playback in MP3 mode on the Nyanka. The Mojave Run Plus comes with a physical button on the left speaker unit and the touchpad on the main unit behind your right ear. The button on the left controls play, pause, tracks, it switches between online and offline mode, and it turns the unit on and off. On the touchpad you can control volume by sliding your fingers up or down, and with a double tap you can activate your voice assistant or switch between normal, shuffle or single loop playback, depending on whether you are in Bluetooth or in MP3 mode. And while I like the large, easy to use button on the left, I don't like using the touchpad at all. First, my ear kind of blocks it so it's not comfortable to use. Second, even if you can reach it easily, the touchpad is not the most accurate when it comes to registering your taps. And third, it doesn't really work underwater or when swimming at all. So from a usability and versatility point of view, both the Nyanka and the Creative can deliver higher overall scores, even though the small buttons crammed next to each other are not as comfortable or easy to use as the big main button on the Mojave. But the Mojave Run Plus is the only one out of these three with a smartphone app. Not that it offers much as far as features, but at least we can do firmware upgrades and we can also select from four different EQ modes. There is Balanced, Swim, Bass and Vocal. And that brings us to the sound quality of the headphones. Starting with the bass, well, you don't get much of it, which shouldn't come as a surprise considering that bone conduction headphones have never been the heavyweight champions of bass response. That said, you get the least amount of power in the lower octaves from the Creative Outlier 3 Pro, followed by the Nyanka, with the winner being the Mojave. But there is one big caveat. I don't really know why, but in Bluetooth mode I got some distortions in the bass on the Mojave, while everything sounds tight and clean in MP3 mode. So it's not the speakers themselves, but something else is going on that causes the distortion. Turning the headphones down to around 40-50% to of volume cleans up the bass in Bluetooth mode, and compared to the other two headphones, the Run Plus is still comparably loud even at those lower volumes. And in MP3 mode, the Mojave has the best bass of them all by far. With that come some vibrations as well, but that's always the price we have to pay for a stronger bass on bone conduction headsets. 
Between the other two, it's the Nyanka that delivers more punch at the bottom end, which makes their sound much warmer than that of the Outlier 3 Pro. In terms of vibrations, the Creative headset wins, as it's almost a non-issue there due to the almost complete lack of bass. Nyanka will give you more of a head massage, but still not as much as the Mahava at full power. As for the mid-range, thanks to a boost in the upper mids, everything sounds a touch less natural and a bit thin and shouty on the Outlier 3 Pro. However, due to the bump in the lower mids and in the upper bass, the sound of the Nyanka is more full-bodied, warm and rich. Vocals and instruments are more forward sounding on the Mojave Run Plus, but maybe they are not quite as rich and warm as on the Nyanka. In terms of treble detail and sparkle, we get a lot of that from both the Nyanka and the Mojave, but the highs on the Outlier 3 Pro are a touch more harsh and the extension is more limited too. We get the widest and most spacious image from the Nyanka, but it's rather diffuse and not overly sharp or precise. In contrast to that, the Mojave Run Plus can throw a forward and center focused image in between your ears at the expense of the limited lateral extension of the sound stage. The creative is somewhere between the two. But all I've been talking about so far was without using earplugs. In general, I consider plugging your ears to be a good idea when in the pool or in the sea, but it's pretty much a must when listening to music in the water. It's simply because depending on how you swim, you will move and turn your head a lot, so your ears will be in and out of the water, which can make your headphones sound a bit hectic and uneven. So if you want a consistent sound both in terms of quality and volume, using earplugs is kind of crucial in my opinion. And while all three headphones come with a pair of silicone plugs in the box, I like using ear plugs with a neck strap to make sure I don't lose them in the sea. But regardless of the plugs you use, the warm base of the Runner Diver 2 becomes a bit too overpowering, while the thin sounding Outlier 3 Pro becomes more balanced, thanks to the boosted base with the plugs. It feels like Creative tuned their headphones to be used first and foremost with earplugs in the water, while Noenka focused on delivering the best open ear sound on land. With the Mojave Run Plus, I found two things. First, you can turn the headphones all the way down when using earplugs, as the volume will be still plenty loud for swimming at around 25 to 30 percent. And second, you get the app where there are four different sound modes one specifically created for swimming with boosted mids, so you can play around with options before diving into the pool. Well, not all swimming pools will allow diving, but you get the idea. And since neither of the other two buds have an app or a chance to tweak their sound, you are stuck with the to plug or not to plug dilemma. And to wrap this all up, I know you expect me to somehow rank these three headphones, but before I get into that, I have to say that even though not much have changed in terms of functionality and performance since my last Swim headphones comparison three years ago, especially when it comes to transferring music onto your headphones, all three of these guys can be used wirelessly and also offline, so they can feed you with your favorite tunes during workouts either on land or in the water and some of them even offer up-to-date wireless tech, such as Multipoint or Bluetooth 5.3. So while I would not call it a revolution at all, some slight evolution is evident. And strictly from a financial perspective, the best value is clearly the Creative Outlier 3 Pro, since they cut the price in half after announcing the 3 Pro Plus recently, which offers you the exact same feature set and overall design, with the exception of some new adjustable speakers. So if you want to save money and get a decent set of headphones for your pool sessions, the Creative Outlier 3 Pro is probably the way to go now. Of course, I can only talk about prices at the time of making this video. For actual ones, please check out the links in the description. Moving on, if you have deeper pockets, you can spend your money on the Nyanka Runner Diver Mark II to get a better overall sound and four times the storage capacity. It will still be painfully slow to transfer files and the design is basically the same, but you get four times the storage from the Anka nonetheless. And my personal favorites are the Mojave Run Plus headphones in spite of two major issues I have with these guys. First, there is the distortion in the bass in Bluetooth mode and second, there is the touchpad which is a pain to use, especially in the water. 
But again, when swimming, you will only use the MP3 mode, which sounds much cleaner for whatever reason, and as I said it before, I would just set everything up before getting into the pool, including volume, so the disabled touch controls would not bother me during my swim. Plus there are the fastest transfer speeds in the group, and the app support with the possibility of getting firmware upgrades down the road. The compact size and the tight fit also make the Run Plus the best for using them in the water, with or without a swim cap. And since this is a best headphones for swimmers comparison of some sorts, the Mojave Run Plus is my top choice. And this was my take on these three waterproof bone conduction headphones. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, and if you have anything to add or ask, feel free to comment away. Thanks for watching everyone, hope to see you all in the next one.